Welcome to the Big Traffic Fire Sale, your one-stop method on generating massive traffic. Regardless of your intention to grow a business, starting up or simply to gain popularity, this course helps you in generating traffic using paid and free methods. Why is traffic important? If you own a business, it's the main driver for sales. You can have the best sales funnel on the planet, but if no one is visiting your website, it doesn't mean a thing. How would you ever expect to get income without visitors? The theory's simple. The higher your traffic is, the higher probability it converts to sales. What types of traffic are there? Basically, there's only two kinds of traffic that can help you generate traffic. Paid and free traffic. Paid traffic is a form of traffic that you an online business generating using services that require payments. Usually, you need a service that is embedded within your website or you hire agents to help you set up paid traffic. There are multiple platforms that provide the services of paid traffic. This usually comes in the form of a paid advertisement that comes up first on a user's dashboard. Take a look at Facebook, for example. The right column of your newsfeed is the advertisement board. In order for owners of the Facebook page to promote their page or items they have on sale on the column, they need to pay Facebook for the service. This is similar to when you scroll down on Instagram and stumble upon a sponsored content. Free traffic, on the other hand, is none of that. They're called organic traffic because it's generating traffic using a non-paying method. It depends solely on the user's skill to optimize their website by utilizing keywords, tags, and multiple crosslinks. Some searches, if you look it up on your web browsers, are not labeled with ads on them, but they still make it on the first page of the search result. It's all about using multiple social networks and other websites to link the desired site that needs traffic. In Big Traffic Fire Sale, you will learn how to get the best out of your desired traffic using both paid traffic and free traffic. Hello there and welcome to the Big Traffic Fire Sale course. In this particular module, we'll be talking about how you can generate traffic effectively via Google AdWords. It doesn't matter if you have zero to little knowledge on generating leads, traffic using this method, as this course will surely equip you with the answers that you've been looking for. It'll also add value to what some of you seasoned users already know. So what is Google AdWords and how do you utilize it to generate traffic? Google AdWords is Google's own advertising service which allows you to play search results for your own website or landing page. The search results for your product or service will appear on the search engine results page, the SERP, which you would have to pay a certain amount to get your results displayed. For some of you who are still new to the internet marketing scene, Google AdWords is one of the easiest and practical ways to generate traffic to your landing page. Contrary to popular belief, the steps are actually quite simple and are not as pricey as some may perceive it to be. Where are my advertisements displayed? How is it displayed? As mentioned in the previous slide, your advertisements will be displayed on the SERP within the listings of the search engine. The SERP is the results page where users have typed their keywords for their search of interest in the Google search page beforehand. The ads can appear in two ways, at the top of the SERP or at the sides. They can look more and more alike, like the original search results. Usually, a lot of users do not actually recognize the difference between an ad and the original search results. At the moment, Google places a small ad label on the Google AdWords which appear in the SERP. Now that you have a rough idea on what Google AdWords is, we'll look into the mechanics of how to start your own Google AdWords campaign and navigating it towards your favor. Hello there and welcome back to the Google AdWords module. In this module, we'll be unraveling the mechanics of this vehicle, which is essential to kickstart your own campaign and generate your very own traffic. The first vital step is to kickstart your Google AdWords journey, is to create a Google account. If you already have an existing account, then you're good to go. But some users prefer to create a new account specifically for their use of Google AdWords, so it would not get messy and it'll be more organized. Once you're logged into your account, click on Create Your First Campaign button. 
Then there's seven simple steps to kickstart your campaign. One, select your campaign type and name. Two, choose the graphic location where you want your ads to appear. Three, select your bid strategy and set your daily budget. Four, create your first ad group and write your first ad. Five, insert your keywords into the keyword field in your account. Six, set your maximum cost per click. Seven, enter your billing information. For the first step, I recommend that you choose the search network only as your campaign type for starters. Secondly, decide how large or small a graphic area you want to target. Thirdly, change the default bid strategy to, I'll manually set my bids for clicks, so you can easily work within your budget. Next, when you write your first ad, ensure your keywords are also inserted in the headline. The fifth step is to paste your keywords. Start with just one set and add plus signs, brackets, and quotation marks to see how many search results you'll get. The sixth step is to set your maximum CPC within your budget, for starters, maybe to always scale. Finally, your ads will start showing up once you've confirmed your payment. Now you're set! When you are already set up, it's time to delve into the building blocks, which is understanding what makes Google AdWords work. Keywords. Selecting the correct and relevant keywords to direct the audience to your landing page is key. As the advertiser, you select a keyword that a searcher might type when they search for their particular interest on the Google search engine. Then you create an advert that will appear on the SERP based on the keywords. Let's illustrate an example. When a person searches for travel packages to India on the search engine, adverts may appear alongside the search either at the top or on the right-hand side of the SERP. Organic search results will also appear amongst the ads where some people may or may not notice the difference between the two. When you choose to venture into the Google AdWords scene, bear in mind that you're not the only company wanting to serve adverts for that particular keyword or keywords. Other companies with similar niches can also bid for a spot in the SERP. The truth is, if you want your ad to appear at all, you would have to compete against other marketers. The more you pay per click, the higher chance your advert appears in the SERP. However, unlike real-life bidding, it's not just the highest bid for price that is taken into account for the projection of your ad. Google also measures your ad by quality score, which we will unravel in the next chapter. Welcome back. In this module, you'll learn two major components that determines the success of your adverts, the highest bid and quality score. Now, let's understand the basics of bidding. Let's say most of us here have started out with our AdWord campaigns. First and foremost, you want to ensure that you spend within your budget. And for starters, it's common to bid your price referring to cost per click, CPC. In this context, CPC simply means that you pay for the amount of clicks on your advert. Google allows you to pay the maximum bid amount of your chosen keyword, or if you have a tight budget to keep, you can always choose the automatic option. Google will automatically select the bid amount for you within your budget, which is known as maximum cost per click bid. Google will then provide you the most possible clicks within your budget. There is no fixed rule for the bid amount that you should be paying. Different people will have different bidding prices, and at the end of the day, it is dependent on these three important factors, which are the type of campaign you're aiming for, the cost of your keywords, the success rate of your keywords. For example, let's say you've set your CPC bid to $1. You own an online clothing line shop, and you make $10 from every purchase, and on average, one in 10 visits results in a purchase. As a result, you only break even as your advertising cost is equal to the profit you generate. Therefore, to gain profit, your CPC should cost you less than a dollar. Hence, choose a bid amount that works for you in the campaign that you're aiming for. The next factor is the quality score. Before your keywords can reach the results page, Google will evaluate the relevance and the usefulness of your selected keywords for ads. This is to ensure that your keywords are relevant to the users. Google also looks into the quality of your website. For example, if the user types in Converse sneakers and your advert is purchase your Converse here, 
Once they click on your ad, they would expect to be directly led to a website selling Converse sneakers and not a generic homepage, which is not good enough and is not what the user wants. You should take into account that a higher bid for an AdWord does not necessarily buy you to your results page display success. As a matter of fact, even if your rival's bid is higher, it's possible that you appear above their ad. The reason being your quality score is better. Higher quality score, lower CPC, so focus on both cost and relevance. Hi there and welcome back. In this module, we'll learn the strategies and tactics in utilizing your Google AdWords to their maximum potential. The two tactics that we will be discussing is how to structure your Google AdWords account and identifying your relevant keywords. Previously, we've already discussed the steps on how to create your Google AdWords account. But in order for you to be systematic and to stay relevant, there are effective ways to structure your AdWords account. A relevant and logical account structure will surely have a significant impact on your ads, especially in your quality score. When your AdWords account is structured strategically and correctly, it will aid you in the following aspects. More relevant clicks and traffic, a high quality score, therefore lower CPC, making your account more easier to manage and maintain. If you're planning to run only one campaign, your Google AdWords account is likely to be simple. However, if you plan to run multiple campaigns at the same time, it'll surely pay off when you consider to structure your account in a more optimized manner. Therefore, you can structure your AdWords account as follows. An individual account is structured into individual campaigns. Each individual campaign will have its own ad group. Each ad group will then have its own keyword, unique content, as well as their own landing page. There are multiple ways in which you can set up your Google AdWords account depending on your personal objectives. For instance, you can strategically structure your AdWords account based on your website, referring to the different categories of products or services you're offering. Meanwhile, you may also structure your account based on demographics, such as geographic location, if your business operates in different markets. Now that you've already structured your AdWords account based on the campaigns, you would now have to identify which relevant keyword to apply for the different campaign ads. In order for you to come up with the most suitable and effective keyword, thorough research must be done. This is to ensure that the keywords you intend to use are not of a low quality score and are also not too competitive. This may result in your ad not having a shot to be displayed. There are various ways to conduct keyword research when launching a new AdWords campaign, and one is using WordStream's free keyword tool to start. The steps are fairly simple. First, you need to key in a search term, for instance like baking supplies. WordStream will then generate a comprehensive list of keywords relating to the original search term. The most interesting part is the relative frequency data for the keywords is also made visible to you. You may also view the competitiveness of the keywords as well as the search volume using data from both Google and WordStream. On top of that, you may also test out your keywords by using the WordStream Advisor. It enables you to search for new keyword ideas, identifying the keyword niches, and most importantly, excluding negative keywords from your campaign. WordStream Advisor is WordStream's free keyword tool, PPC, and social media advertising platform. Remember to always start small with the number of keywords per ad group, which is 10 to 20 maximum. That's because Google works in a way where when there are too many keywords in a particular ad group, the list will get too crowded and the chances of your getting results or generating traffic based on the keywords are slim. Some may not even generate anything at all. Next, we'll identify your audience and USP, Unique Selling Proposition. This will surely set you apart from your other AdWords competitors, and we'll explore that in the next module. Hey there, and welcome back to the Google AdWords module. In this particular episode, we'll explore more of the strategies to ensure your AdWords campaign's success, which is identifying your audience and your unique selling point. One of the most important factors in ensuring you strategize your ads effectively is by identifying who your customers are and their demands. Developing characters is essential, as you would have an idea of who your potential prospects are, 
Ask yourself these important questions. What does the customer want? What does your ideal customer do? When do they do it? When are they actively searching for what they want? What device are they using? When you have asked these questions, make sure that you follow it up with thorough research. By doing so, you'll discover your market as well as the customer's needs. Therefore, would you agree that you would not be wasting your resources like time, money, and energy in developing your AdWord campaign? Think of it this way. If your customers are not searching for your product or service via Google AdWords, then obviously your campaign will surely be a waste. Too often entrepreneurs are so much in love with their products or services that they're offering, they forget that it's not their needs to satisfy but their customers. So hold your horses and before you enthusiastically launch your first campaign, you need to verify whether there is in fact an audience for your show. Next, it's imperative that you identify your USP, your unique selling proposition. What is USP? Your USP is what sets you apart from you and your competitors. It gives you an edge where it gives your prospects a convincing reason to choose you over everyone else. For instance, if you choose to advertise your traveling package to New Zealand, what makes your travel package different from the ones readily available in the market? What is your X factor? Do you offer destinations in New Zealand that other companies never offered before, or do you have complimentary prizes that other companies never thought of? Are you unique enough? As Dan Kennedy, direct response marketing expert, would put it, why should I, your prospect, choose to do business with you versus any other option, including doing nothing? A powerful USP that everyone will surely realize is fresh hot pizza delivered in 30 minutes or less guaranteed. This USP originates from Domino's Pizza, which they applied to create a billion dollar company. So it leaves us with the most vital question, how do you create your own USP? First, identify your strength and what do you have that others don't. As stated earlier, this will be your X factor. Secondly, interact with your customers by hearing them out. A great company is built on customers' feedback and insight. Ask your customers these following set of questions. Why are they doing business with you and not the others? What do they like about your product or service? What can you improve on? Always remember that your price tag is not the sole reason why people buy your product or service. If your competitor is pulling you down on pricing because they're more established, you have to be creative and tackle another sales feature that will compensate the customer's needs. You need to build your sales around that particular feature. Thirdly, in order to create a very compelling USP, Analyze your competitors. As the saying goes, if you can't beat them, join them. The best way to go about it is by conducting a competitor analysis. Make sure to analyze your competitors' ads, websites, and marketing materials. This way you can find a way to stand out from the crowd and establish a unique AdWord campaign. Hi there, and welcome back to another episode of the Google AdWords series. In this module, we'll discuss the steps in coming up with killer ads for your AdWords campaign. When it comes to Google AdWords, most people disregard the fact that besides traffic that you intend to generate, there will be unwanted traffic too. You must take this into account as you're paying when people click on your ads. Therefore, your ads have two very important missions. To attract potential and qualified customers to click on your ads instead of your competitors to keep the non-related and unqualified customers at bay by not clicking your ads. This concludes that when you have more relevant clicks, you generate more sales. When you do not have unwanted traffic clicking on your ads, you would eventually save more money where it adds to your profit margin. Now, the question is how do you direct the qualified customers to your ad? Well, you'd need to master the art of composing killer ads. There are four key components to your AdWords campaign. One, headline. Two, description line one. Three, description line two. Four, display URL. Bear in mind that these components will either make you or break you. First, let's look at the headline. The headline should be your main focus, as it's what your prospects will be reading first of all. Moreover, AdWords will only allow a maximum of 25 characters per headline so make every precious character count. One proven way to construct a compelling headline is by speaking to your customer's end goal. 
Don't ask them questions that they already are asking themselves and what they already know. Let me give you an example. If your customer is searching for pesticides for their crops, you should not have your headline as searching for pesticides, which can be redundant. Instead, give them the answer that they're looking for and what they want to achieve. Therefore, your ad headline should be written in this manner. Get rid of pests once and for all. Save your crops. Give them a solution. For your description line 1 and 2, you are only given 35 characters. Hence, reiterate your offer as effective as possible. Remember to include your USP as well as your call to action to prompt your customer. Another powerful tool to boost your click-through rate is by using the countdown timer, a current feature introduced by Google. This feature can also be inserted in your AdWords campaign which will install a psychological force known as loss aversion to your prospects. Sometimes people are motivated by the idea of not wanting to be left behind than the idea of gaining something new. Therefore, by adding the simple feature of having an end date to your offer and including a real-life countdown on your ad, you'll surely inject a fear of loss in your prospects. This will surely give you an edge over your competitors. Last but not least, let's look at the display URL. This is oftentimes ignored by most users. The display URL is an important marketing feature if you know how to structure it. Most users will find the easy way out by just copying and pasting their domain name. Instead, what you can do is include your offer, your call to action, or even your USP that will make your URL unforgettable. Let's take a look at the context of the pesticides earlier on. www.domain.com Proven Pesticides www.domain.com Pests Control www.domain.com Unharmful Pesticides When you have already mastered this art, it will increase your click-through rate, CTR, which in turn will boost your quality score and lower your cost per click, or CPC. Think of it this way, great ads will minimize your cost, while lousy ads will only add to it. Welcome back to yet another module of Google AdWords. In this module, we'll be focusing on the final important strategic to get your AdWords campaign running smoothly, which is tracking your conversions. Conversions tracking is a free tool provided by Google AdWords, which shows you exactly what happens after a customer views or clicks your ads. A conversion can be defined as an action made by a customer after they viewed or clicked on your ads. This may include purchasing a product from your website, signed up for your newsletter, called to get to know more of what your business is about, as well as downloading your app. Why use conversion tracking? Conversion tracking tracks your keywords and adds progress. If you skip this step, you'll never have an idea on which keywords, ads, ad groups, and campaigns are generating money and which ones are only pulling your resources down. In another sense, you wouldn't be able to optimize your campaign once it's up and running. There are quite a few ways to track conversions, and it all depends on your business goals. Some of the popular ways to track your conversions are as follows. Online sales, phone calls, app downloads, in-app actions, new leads, in-store purchases. Let's illustrate an example on how you can track your conversions. For example, via online sales, Assuming that you're operating an online boutique specializing in denim jackets. To track conversions, you add a single snippet of JavaScript code to the confirmation page where your users will view after they have paid for their purchase. In this case, you'll be tracking clicks on your AdWords campaign that converts into purchases. Let's say you make $40 on each denim jacket you sell. With the aid of conversion tracking, you can identify how much you spend on advertising your goods. In this context, let's say that you spend about $10 for each purchase your ad generates. As a result, your return on investment, ROI, is $30. This shows that your business is generating a positive value as you are gaining more than what you have spent. The example illustrated above shows how you can easily optimize your business with the help of conversion tracking. How about if you have multiple businesses to take care of? Well, it surely can come in handy too. By using conversion tracking, you can compare and contrast 
between the two businesses and see which AdWords campaign is working better for you in terms of conversions. If you track that your business in A is converting relatively better than your business in B, you can decide on ways to improve by allocating more of your advertising budget to business B, or you can make adjustments to your AdWord campaign to boost your profit in business B even more. Having your conversion tracking data is very useful as it helps you understand how your advertising campaigns help you achieve your business goals. It also provides you space to tweak your strategies and aligning your budget. Hey there and welcome back. We've already gone through seven modules of the Google AdWords series. You've learned about what Google AdWords is, what are the mechanics, how you can start your own campaign, and the strategies and tactics to go about it. We finally reached the last module where it's all about optimizing your AdWords campaign. From the previous modules, I'm certain that you are now able to launch your Google AdWords campaign. Once Google approves your ads, congrats! You're now up and running. However, even if you are on the right track and doing everything right, it's still hard to assess how well you're performing in the scene. Bear in mind, most campaigns that are just starting up will also need some time to generate profit. Therefore, test running your AdWords campaign is key to ensuring its success and sustainability. There are three ways to conduct your tests. One, keep track of your keyword bids. Two, optimizing your click-through rate, CTR. Three, landing your page conversion rate. First, keep track of your keywords bids. Once you've generated your clicks and sales, you'll still need to adjust your bids. If your keywords are generating profit but you're still not ranked as the top campaigner, then you should continue to raise your bidding price. However, if your keywords are not generating any profit, you would eventually have to lower your budget in bidding or pause the campaign to improve your game. Second is optimizing your click-through rate, CTR. Your CTR directly affects the performance of your quality score, which is the relevance of your campaign. This will then determine how much you pay per click. The higher the quality score, the lower you pay per click. Therefore, to optimize your CTR, test run different AdWords campaigns to see which version gets the most clicks. Finally is to check your landing page conversion rate. That's done by comparing different versions of your landing page. But fret not, there is a shortcut to this method. For starters, you can make use of the Google Analytics experiment, where it's easy and free. This tool enables you to test any slight change or variation to your website which enables you to measure which landing page generates the most conversions. So now you're good to go. I hope you've already mastered the tricks of the trade in the Google AdWords scene. You can focus on optimizing your campaigns by adjusting the necessary features to maximize your conversion rates and minimize your costs.